What's going on guys? This is Barker. Back with another video. Back like I never left. Back like The Office never left Netflix. I like lag there. I don't know if you saw that. But basically, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 NBA players in the NBA 2021. Currently, whatever you want to call it. This season. Uh, I'm going to start off with honorable mentions. And then go from 10 to 1. So... Ascending order, if you want to say it like that. <laughs> so, honorable mentions, we got Jason Tatum, Anthony Davis, Paul George, James Harden, Julius Randle, and Kawhi Leonard. They were all having solid seasons this year, but they aren't at the top 10, in my opinion. You can have your own opinion. I would love to hear your opinion, if I'm wrong or not. I love being told I'm wrong. Not really. Okay, number 10. I'm going to be starting off with Honestly, a surprise. I never would have guessed this if you asked me last year. DeMontis Sabonis, averaging 21.7 points, career high, 12.8 rebounds, career high, and 5.8 assists, career high. The man has improved on everything this year. He is balling out for the Indiana Pacers. That's why they're a top five team in the East, and that's why they're going to stay a top five team in the East. He is... The next generation of big men in the league. And offensively, he's extremely talented. And he's probably going to become an all-star this year, just like he did last year. Except way better now. Number nine, I have Joel Embiid. Another generational big man. Averaging 25 points, 11.5 rebounds, and 1.4 steals. Career high. So, the reason I put Embiid above Sabonis is the fact that Embiid is stacks above Sabonis on the defensive end. So in my opinion, Embiid is a better player than Sabonis because Sabonis isn't an elite defender, but Embiid is. Embiid's like a defensive player of the year candidate some year. Sabonis right now does not look like he ever will be. Number eight, LeBron James, a guy who's always like in the top 10 list for every year. 23.7 points, 7.5 assists, and a career low 32.2 minutes per game. So he's averaging almost 24 points and 7.5 and assists, playing a career low in minutes. Lower than his rookie year, and he's averaging stats like this. The man doesn't know when to stop. He's 36 years old, looks like he's literally 25 out there. It's insane. Number 7, I got Damian Lillard, Dame Time. Averaging 28.1 points and 6.7 assists. Trailblazers are a top team. Damian Lillard's always going to be a top point guard in the league. And now that CJ McCollum got injured for a lot of the season, I think he might be out for the whole season. I'm not 100% sure on that. But either way, Damian Lillard's going to have an uptick in shooting and running the offense. So I think those numbers are just going to keep increasing. He might rank up even higher. Number six, I got Steph Curry, averaging 28.2 points and 6.2 assists. It's like the same as Damian Lillard, except Steph Curry, when he plays good, he plays good. 60-point games, game-winning shots, just like he did last night against the Lakers. So that's why I put Steph Curry a little higher than Damian Lillard. Plus, like, Steph Curry is carrying a team of nobodies, and Damian Lillard's carrying a solid playoff team right now. So that's my opinion. What's going on, guys? I'm back. Technical difficulties, but I'm just going to continue where I left off, saying Steph Curry was six. Now, number five is the reigning MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo. I love saying his last name. Averaging 27.2 points and 10.2 rebounds. So, the man is always going to be an MVP candidate just based on his skill set. He can dunk the ball whenever he wants. That's why they just let him shoot threes whenever he wants, even though he... He's honestly making him a lot better than he usually does. and But they're still going to give him that shot because if he drives into the lane, he's going to score or get fouled every single time. So they'd rather him, you know, go like, oh, he's going to make like one-third of all his threes. I'd rather have that than him score 100% of the time going into the paint. And that's why he's number five. And then day 27 and 10 don't jump out at me as MVP candidate. Number four, 
We got Kevin Durant, the Slim Reaper, averaging 30.6 points, 5.8 assists, and shooting 48.4% from three, a career high. Like, I know it's early in the season, but Kevin Durant is one of the most lethal scorers ever in the NBA. He is one of the greatest scorers of all time, and he is still averaging career highs in shooting percentage while he's shooting as much as he usually does. The man's balling out for the Nets. He came back from an Achilles injury and still and looks even better than when before he got injured. It doesn't make any sense. Usually an Achilles injury ruins a player's career. But yet, for some reason, it's making Kevin Durant shoot the ball better. I don't understand. The man just refuses to not be a monster, in my opinion. <laughs> Number three is Luka Doncic, averaging 27.2 points, 9.9 rebounds, career high. 9.3 assists, career high, and then a career low shooting 28.7% from three, which is terrible, but you have to put him in the top three because he's basically averaging a 27-point triple-double and was carrying the Mavericks to wins that they shouldn't have gotten when Chris Stops was injured. Uh, he's a really good player. Sometimes he doesn't shoot the ball very well, and he needs to learn from players like Harden, and Steph Curry, who constantly get double teamed to still be able to score efficiently and pass the ball efficiently. Uh, he's still young. I think he's going to improve. But right now, 28.7% from three is going to get you third on the list at most. I'm sorry. Number two is honestly a shock. Bradley Beal of the Washington Wizards, averaging 34.9 points, career high, and league high. He is leading the league in scoring at 34.9 points and 5 assists. Uh, obviously, the Wizards don't have the most wins, but Bradley Beal is giving it his all. He's averaging 35 points a game. The man is not a surprise when he drops 50, 60 points a game. And he still loses them because Westbrook's injured, and even when he has played, he hasn't played like Westbrook. And honestly, if the Wizards don't make the playoffs this year... If I'm Bradley Beal, I'm requesting a trade out. He's playing like the next James Harden, and his team is playing like James Harden on defense. That's <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head. But yeah, Bradley Beal's a monster. He needs to get on a contender. The Wizards are just wasting away his career, in my opinion. And then number one, who, in my opinion, I don't think many people thought this coming into the season, but he is the best player playing right now in the league. His stats say it all. Nikola Jokic of the Denver Nuggets. He is averaging 25.1 points, career high. 11.4 rebounds, career high. 10 assists, career high. And 1.9 steals, a career high. You guessed it. The man is averaging a triple-double, a 25-point triple-double, as a center in the NBA. And he's averaging 1.9 steals, a career high, like I said before. So he's even doing it on the defensive end. Obviously, steals aren't everything. It also has to do with blocks and yada, yada, yada. I, I get it. And, you know, putting your hand up when someone tries to shoot in the paint as a center. But he's doing it on all ends. Obviously, a 25-point triple-double, he's shooting way better than what Luka's doing. And that's why Jokic has that edge. And the fact that he's doing it as a center in the modern-day NBA is the most insane thing ever. People were saying, oh, the center position's gone. Everyone's going to go small ball. Jokic is not small, small ball. That man has a very thick body. <laughs> like, he, he is not small ball. But he can shoot it. He plays like a point guard. He's fun to watch. He's the best player right now in the league while well, he's playing like it. And honestly, he's my MVP favorite right now. So... Let me know what you guys think about what I said. Did I say anything wrong? Did I rank people too high? Let me know. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you like the video, hit subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Literally the world. My car transmission just died. It cost 4K to fix. I am a broke boy. I need any love I can get. Peace.